Hey everybody. I've been asked many times over the years to give my opinion about the nitrate test strips rather than the API uh, vial tests that I normally use. And I've never really been able to give an honest opinion about it because I've never really used the dip strips. I've experienced them in stores uh, and places like that, but I've never actually used them myself. So I recently purchased a 25 pack of the Tetra Easy Strips. They're five in one strips. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about the four other tests on there. I was only focused on the nitrate part of the test, but I did go through a whole package of them. So I now have at least some sort of opinion about whether or not they're any good, whether they're worth buying, etc. So today we're going to talk about the three basic uh, aspects of the comparing these two tests. We're going to talk about the accuracy of the test. We're going to talk about the convenience of the tests, and we're going to talk about the price of the tests and the cost of them. So as far as accuracy, that's where we probably need the most discussion. And that's because there's sort of a subcategory between accuracy and then precision. So as far as I can tell, both tests are accurate. And let me say right off the bat, as far as the accuracy aspects of these tests are concerned, none of these tests are meant to be highly precise. They're meant to give you a pretty good idea of what the nitrate in your tank is. So you don't need to know whether it's 38 parts per million or 44 parts per million as long as you're in that ballpark, that's as precise as you need it to be. You do need it to be accurate, however. If it is 42 parts per million, you need it to show in that window every time. And that's the difference between the accuracy and the precision. So neither of these tests is gonna be very precise, but we are gonna get into that because there is a little bit of a difference in the precision. As far as the accuracy is concerned, I compared, every time I did a test with one, I did a test with the other, and I got matching results every single time, bar none. I never got any discrepancy between the two tests. So as far as I'm concerned, and all the different comparisons I've done on various tests over the years, pick your poison as far as when it comes to choosing a nitrate test. They all are basically the same when it comes to accuracy. The only thing you really get that's any different from test to test is that level of precision. How easy is it to tell the difference between 40 parts per million and 60 parts per million? Again, that's not necessary, but if you really want that level of precision, then the, the test you're using does make a difference. And so what I found with the dip strips is they're not very precise, but they are. And what I mean by that is that the graduations on the test key, the little color code you look at, go from zero to 20 to 40 to 80 to 160, and it's all the same color. It's just varying degrees of the same color. It's red and a, a, a zero test is pale. And then it just starts getting redder and redder and redder. It's, I know you might start saying it's pink, but where do you draw the line between pink and red? It's all varying shades of red. And you just have to decide, is it closer to 20? Is it closer to 40? Where does it fall in between? And so while it is accurate, it's not very precise, but after using it for a few times, you honestly don't really even need to look at the card anymore. You can just see how red it turns and you can get an idea of whether you think that's still way down in the sort of pink end of the scale or is it getting up into the red end? And you can use your own judgment. Again, after you've done a few tests and compared it a few times, you'll just be able to dip it, look at it and see how red it gets. The same way I do with my API test kit where you mix the drops together and you shake the vial up and you get that color change in the vial. So on that note, with those tests, you do get an actual color change of sorts. You start out as a pale yellow and then it gradually gets darker and darker and goes up sort of through an orange color and then eventually turns red. Now this technically is still just getting darker and darker from the yellow, but it does change from a yellow to an orange to a red. And that can give you almost like that sort of stoplight effect of yellow is safe, orange is getting close and red is dangerous if you want to look at it that way. And so for the API test kit, it does give you a little more sense of precision when you're looking at it. And when you look at the scale, it starts at five parts per million, then goes to 10 parts per million, then 20. 
So you get two gradients before you even get to 20. And then, of course, it doubles to 40, 80, and then 160, just like the other test does. So if that makes you feel better, this, seeing that you can see a little more precision, like, again, it's six and one half dozen the other as far as I'm concerned. But if I had to give it to one or the other as far as precision goes, I would have to give it to the API test kit as far as being just a little easier to read if down at that low end of the scale if you really do care whether it's 10 parts or 15 parts per million then the api test kit's going to be a little easier to read than the dip test as far as accuracy again they're both just as accurate the one gets the little bit of a plus for being a slightly easier to read test now as far as convenience I shouldn't have to explain that the dip test just blows the API test out of the water. You dip it and you literally can stand there and look at it for 45 to 60 seconds and your test is done. You can see your color and you can throw the thing away and you're done. With the API test kit, not only do you have to store two separate bottles, you've got to store a glass vial. If you drop that glass vial and break it, you have to replace it. You have to fill it with water, make sure it's the perfect, you know, right amount. You got to take one set, count out the drops. You got to take the the next vial shake it vigorously for 30 seconds if you don't shake it properly the test won't come out right you got to count out the proper amount of drops you got to shake the vial you got to wait you know uh, uh five minutes for the vial to change color and then when you're done you've got to wash and rinse the vial and put the vial away the dip strip you dip it you look at it and you throw it away and you're done so when it comes to convenience the dip strips just blow the competition out of the water you cannot get easier than doing that and then as far as price goes I was kind of surprised about this. My initial uh, response was that the obviously the API um, you know liquid test is going to be much cheaper because you get 90 tests in one of those kits and they're only $12 for one of those test kits on Amazon. And when I looked at PetSmart and I looked at the Easy Strips that they sell there, again the the Tetra brand Easy Strips, and I'll put links down below uh, to all this stuff. I do get a little piece of that pie if you do use that link. I get a little uh, bit of that purchase but I don't, I'm not sponsored, I'm not getting any kind of endorsements or anything like that for uh, this video. These are just my personal experiences with these products. So I assumed that for, you know, $12 on Amazon, you get these, um, you know, you get 90 tests and, and that's a pretty good price. So I looked on the PetSmart's website and it's a, the package of 25 was 15 or $18 or something. But then I realized I'm comparing apples to oranges here. I went back to Amazon and I found a hundred count of the Tetra uh, Easy Strips and it was $19.99. So it's $8 more. But when you spread that out over the cost of each test, one came to, I think it was like 14 and a half cents per test and the other was 19 cents a test or something like that. It was less than five cents a test difference. So ultimately, it's not that big a deal. And I wound up purchasing the 100 test strips. So I'm kind of done with doing all those. Now, I still will use them, I'm sure, and I'll make comparisons and do all that kind of stuff. But as far as like buying more of the API, I just, I don't really see the point in it. Those... Just, just to get an idea of what's going on in the tank, just to take that dip strip, dip it in the test and look at it. And again, I'm not even talking about the fact that there's four other tests on that strip too. You're getting four other tests. Now, it one's for chlorine, which I don't have. Um, I think pH and carbonate hardness or water hardness or something are the other ones. Again, it's, it's not tests I would regularly use, but they are there and they are additional tests that come with the kit. And again, a dip, you look at it and you throw it away and you're done. So for a few extra cents, to me, that bit of convenience is worth a few extra cents per test and remember i not only have a lot of tanks but i also have a youtube channel and so i'm doing tests way more than a normal regular fish keeper would because i'm doing content for my channel and i'm doing tests so that i can shoot videos about it and stuff if i was just maintaining my fish tanks i'd use probably 20 percent of the amount of actual test material i go through because i have a youtube channel so if you've got two or three tanks and you want to just spend $15 at PetSmart and pick up a 25 pack of those test strips, that 25, you know, that'll probably last you a year. Who cares about the extra couple dollars? To me, that convenience is really worth it. So I would say on the balance that stop messing around with all the bottles and the drops and all that kind of stuff and just use the test strips. They're, they're just as accurate, if not quite as precise, 
But again, we don't need precision. You need to have an idea of what's going on in your tank. You need to know whether it's 20 parts per million or is it 40 parts per million. And that level of precision really is good enough. And you can also see that it's darker than this, but it's not as dark as that. And it just falls somewhere in between. Imagine if you stepped on a scale and it only went in 25 pound increments. It, you know, the scale would still fall exactly where it's supposed to, but you'd have to guesstimate where it is between this 25 pound marker and this 25 pound marker and, and figure out where it is in between. You'd still get that actual precision. It would just be a little more difficult to read because you don't have the actual number graduations on there. You can think of it like that. So the test strips or like that scale that has these big wide markers and the API test kit has a scale with slightly closer together graduations. It makes it a little easier to, to give you a, a more precise reading. That's the only difference. And if you really think it's worth all that extra hassle, you know, to get that level of extra precision, then, then that's your money. You can go ahead and do that. Um, but from now on, I think I'm just gonna stick with the strips. So that's my two cents. I'd be interested to hear uh, your points of view. And I've heard a million times that the API tests are not that accurate. Um, I disagree with that. I can shoot another video talking about that, but I'm not going to get into that now. If you're interested in that, let me know. And I'll talk about that later in another video. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, don't forget, you can subscribe to my channel, become a member now. Um, and I do accept the super thanks, which helps me pay for all these tests and everything that I do all the time. Uh, that does cost me money out of my pocket. So anybody that wants to send me some super thanks to show their appreciation that's always appreciated on my part so thanks again for that thanks for watching make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you real soon in the next one